All right, welcome to episode 25. This will be another PCB assembly and testing episode. And in particular, I am going to assemble and test this PCB, which is the interrupt and keyboard controller module. This actually replaces two hand-wired protoboard modules that I have been using previously. Also in this episode, I'm going to put together a new backplane. I no longer need a ZIF socket on the backplane for a ROM module. I now have a ZIF socket on the memory and peripherals module that I debugged in the last episode. Also, there was a screw terminal issue with the original backplane where a screw terminal broke and my repair efforts lifted a couple of pads on the PCB, so I will get that all working nicely and neatly with a new backplane. And of course, this is going to eliminate my last remaining excuse not to make progress on the display controller, so one more thing I want to get done and then definitely the display controller will be the focus. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so my plan of attack here is I'm going to start with the interrupt controller portion of the circuit. So that's basically these ICs right here. And I'm going to do a little bit of sanity checking to make sure that power is being routed correctly and that the traces that I can see seem to be going to the right places. Assuming all that looks good, I will solder in some IC sockets and add the decoupling capacitors populate the ICs, then we'll be ready to test with a test program that uses the interrupt controller functionality. All right, so I'll do this off camera, and when I come back, we'll be ready to test this. All right, so I have the IC sockets and other components soldered on, and I have the ICs for the interrupt controller populated, so I think at this point we're ready to test. All right, so we have the module installed in the backplane here along with the other modules. So basically the interrupt controller circuitry should be in place. So what we're gonna do now is run a test program. When we run the test program, it will install a timer interrupt handler, which will output increasing counts on port A of the 82C55, and we should see them on the hex display here. All right, so let us now see if we can upload the test program. All right, that's a good sign. All right, so now we are going to go to address 1000 hex and it's a subroutine, so we'll run the subroutine. At this point, we should be able to unmask interrupts on the interrupt controller or specifically unmask the timer interrupt handler. And so now if we enable interrupts using the Q command, in theory, we should get increasing counts. Okay, and we do, so that's excellent. That means that I think we have some good confidence that the interrupt controller is working. All right, so next step will be the keyboard controller. Okay, so here is the interrupt and keyboard controller module completely populated. So I have all of the ICs and connectors and components required for the keyboard controller. So next step is to hook up the keyboard and see if it works. All right, so I think we are ready to test. So let's run Minicom here and I'll reset the system. All right, so clearly I should be able to type commands here in Minicom and that should work and it does. The next question is, can I type things on the C16 keyboard here? And indeed, I can. So usual test here. That all looks good. So this module is completely working. All right, so there are a few things I want to do at this point. One thing I want to do first is I'm gonna make a couple of software changes to the monitor program. I want the cursor movement and the end of line handling to be correct, regardless of whether I'm running in Qtcom or on an actual terminal. And a couple of things I need to do is I need the monitor program to accept either carriage return or new line as a valid end of line input. And I need to guarantee that when either of those is received that the cursor does go all the way to the beginning of the next line. So small software change. The other thing I am going to do next is I am going to put together the new backplane, as I mentioned earlier. And at that point, I think our hardware setup is pretty much finalized. And we're getting close, I think, to having a, let's say, quote unquote, production quality hardware setup. All right, so let's make those changes to the monitor program. Okay, so I've made a few small changes to the monitor program. Basically, in the mon read command subroutine that reads a line of input, it will now accept either carriage return or new line, or a carriage return followed by new line. Any of those serve as valid end of line inputs. And then the other change is now 
the monitor program is guaranteed to send both a carriage return and a new line when an entire command has been read, and that makes sure that the cursor goes to the beginning of the next line. All right, so I'm going to now just run normal commands here. I'm going to type enter, that will send a carriage return, but as you can see, it looks correct because the cursor was moved to the beginning of the next line before the next prompt was printed, so it now works pretty much as we expect, and I can do the same commands using the hardware keyboard, and when I hit return on the C16 keyboard, it actually sends a new line, but that's also accepted as end of line, and things work correctly, and the cursor is now in the right place. So this is good when I run from a Linux terminal, the output will appear correctly, and when I run with my actual hardware serial terminal, that will also look correct. The monitor I.O. routines are still pretty basic, there's no editing and things like that, but nonetheless, it's, you know, certainly a lot better than it was. All right, so the last piece of business is creating a new, better backplane, and at that point, we can admire the finished goodness of the entire system. So before we move on to the backplane, let's bid farewell to a couple more hand-wired modules, the interrupt controller and the keyboard controller. I am actually going to keep the chips on the keyboard controller module because this hand-wired module actually does have one capability that the finished PCB doesn't, which is it can connect to a serial LCD module, which is useful for debugging the firmware. Okay, so next step, new backplane. Okay, so here is the new backplane. It has the full complement of seven connectors. It has now the screw terminal in the correct place. A lot of soldering, but definitely nice and, and neat. So let's test this and see if it works. All right, so I think we're ready for the moment of truth here. So let's power on. Okay, that's a good sign. Woohoo! I think we have a completely working backplane and all of our modules are working, so everything is in really good shape. All right, so let's take one close-up shot of the finished hardware just to get a sense of how this all came together. All right, here's the system on the bench in operation with the completed modules. Looking pretty nice. And finally, here are the completed modules, CPU and glue logic, memory and peripherals, and interrupt and keyboard controllers. And I have to say, it's very satisfying to see everything in this form, given where we started with just messes of wires on breadboards. I'm very satisfied with how this turned out. All right, so we have tidied up some loose ends. All of our PCBs are completely working. There are no longer any hand-wired protoboards in the system. We made some nice improvements to the ROM monitor that improves the handling of end-of-line detection and cursor movement. We have a new backplane that has a proper power connector and a full complement of backplane connectors. So for sure, the next thing we're going to work on is the display processor. And so with the display processor and sound, being basically the last hardware features, it is almost seeming to me like we may have the end of this series in sight. I would say we're approaching the point where this satisfies all of my goals for the system, but it's certainly going to be months and probably more than a year before everything is completely done. So definitely there will be more videos to come. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.